it's Kat Fambini, Peace Punk Production, what we talk about narcissism. Narcissism and all its myriad different aspects. My viewers who've been watching for a long time already know. Today I'm going to talk about symptoms that you might be experiencing narcissistic abuse. The top five symptoms. Or that you might notice in a friend or a family member who's experiencing narcissistic abuse because you can spot it out in others. It's not just people who are looking for it to themselves who come here to find help, right? So you can notice and be very perceptive about a friend, a best friend, or a sister, a brother, cousin, aunt, uncle. So the first thing that you'll notice is self doubt. There's a lot of self-doubt, like maybe before they were very, very confident or you were very, very confident and now you doubt everything or your friend doubts everything. They're just always second guessing. They don't seem to trust anything at all, you know, and there seems to be no faith that things will work out. It's just kind of like they said they had a confident career before, they were really stylish, they really had their own sense of self, and now they don't. They have this sense of self-doubt about everything they do, they say they're sorry all the time. That's a huge red flag. Um, and they don't trust their own judgment. You know, when before they did, maybe they were you really like the leader of their class or like valedictorian or whatever it is that, you know, symbolizes they were very confident in themselves, now they don't know their ass from their tail you know they just they can't seem to figure it out uh, another thing that you'll notice is a sense of helplessness just the sense that nothing will work and you'll see this in abuse victims a lot just a sense of extreme debilitating helplessness and you'll notice this when you're even trying to help out somebody who's in an abusive situation that they may only have the words to tell you barely what's happening but they're like really hold on let me drink some of my drink here um, you know they, they really don't seem to have any sense that they can get out of they can't even talk about getting out of it like they they can barely even talk about it so that sense of helplessness of like not really even knowing what's going on not really knowing like how to fix it not knowing how to get from here to there not knowing if the relationship is good or not not knowing if they want to be in it or not, you know, just that sense of like a deer in headlights, right? That sense of helplessness. Um, social withdrawal because they're embarrassed, you know, or if you're in the relationship, you're embarrassed to be with this person. Like maybe you've talked about it so much, your friends are sick of it, they've all told you to leave, or, you know, the best advice that I've heard given if you hear somebody talk to you about narcissistic abuse or if they're being, you know, abused at all, is not to tell them to leave because that might make them stay longer. They might feel more embarrassed. And if you've been in one of these situations, you know how it is. You're just like, you're so embarrassed because you're not like everybody else. You're dealing with this stress behind closed doors that you don't even want to admit to people. And then when you do, they're like, well, just leave them. You know, they don't realize how complicated it is. They don't realize that you share a bank account or a house or kids or, they just don't understand what it's like to be an adult. And so you just, you become embarrassed because you should know better. You should have the resources, but you don't quite seem to know what the resources are. There's like this invisible world that you just have no clue about. And so, you know, you just feel like you don't want to be around anybody. And so you just kind of pull away from family, from friends, and this can go on for a very long time. So by the time that you end up getting help or your friend or family member ends up wanting help, they don't have anybody they can trust. They may have a hard time coming to you you know, or you may have a hard time going to anybody because it's been so long that you're like, oh, maybe I've burned all these bridges because you kind of just went into hermit mode with your abusive person for so long. Uh, or you had to, you live with them, they're your parents, you know, they're your sister, they're your brother, you don't have any choice in the pandemic, you know, you guys are squeezed together in a tiny house, you know, that's happening too. Um, and so, yeah, the, the fourth one would be just anxiety. Uh, just this general sense of like anxiety, like always, always feeling anxious, like something's wrong, the other shoe's gonna drop. And it, a lot of that comes from the hypervigilance of being interrogated or attacked or put down all the time by a narcissistic partner or family member or friend. So you just have this sense of being on edge, right? And so that makes your system constantly be 
giving out hormones like cortisol and you know your stress levels are higher so then you can't sleep you may not be eating usually it's not eating but you might be overeating um, but generally you're just you're anxious and you feel like something's wrong all the time like when you call your friends maybe you're just always on alert and they're like they don't even want to hear from you because they're like oh my god she's just always so stressed out she's just take a xanax or something right um, we all know that person and we've all been that person right if we're watching this we've probably been that person and then the fifth one, the fifth one is the, not the fifth one the fifth one is a chronic sense of self guessing second second guessing self so see if i had just made that mistake i'd be like oh my god am i okay Do, should i even be doing this channel like maybe i should check with my abusive person to make sure that they approve of me you know like it's just this sense of like nothing is right like you're always doubting yourself like being at the store i remember just being like i don't even know what lotion to pick you know that's just some example random or like what kind of soap do i get what makes me human i have no idea and i had nobody to like consult with about whether or not that was okay you know so i was just like floundering and like everybody was just kind of pointing me in all these different directions like i just kept getting shuffled here there and everywhere else and i'm like oh my god this is all just the same as everywhere else and so i had to like retreat and just figure out who I was again, right? So those are the top five that you'll sense in yourself or others, that doubting, um, second guessing, anxiety, helplessness, and social withdrawal. So if you notice these in yourself, those are huge warning flags red flags if you see those in your friends the red flags and I wouldn't recommend that you talk to a friend like hey you need to leave like that's the worst thing you can say to them <laughs> so don't even ask if you don't have the space to hear I mean that's my real talk for you if you don't have the space to hear if a friend's going through it don't ask don't do it for your gossipy little curiosity that's the worst thing you can do to an abuse victim <laughs> everybody that's been through it knows that you know that so anyways peace out guys love to you and top five things you would experience if you're dealing with narcissistic abuse or that you might see in your friends. If you have any questions, write down below. Please like and subscribe so that I can keep doing these. Thank you for watching. Bye.